Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video, which is going to be my November roundup, talking about my favorites, some fails, everything that I tried in the month of November and all of my comprehensive thoughts using all of these products over the last few weeks. So without further ado, let's get started. So before we get started, today's video is again, very kindly sponsored by Ana Luisa. If you are not familiar with Ana Luisa, they make gorgeous, beautiful, affordable and sustainable jewellery. My kind of jewellery preference is like everyday, simple but beautiful, elegant pieces that you can wear day in, day out and are very versatile as to wear and when you can wear them. I want to get like the most out of my jewellery. I don't wear, before like the last few months, I didn't wear earrings hardly at all, but then I had my conch pierced and Ana Luisa reached out offering me to try some of their products. And since then I've barely spent a day without earrings. It's just really got me back into my love of earrings again. And what I've found is that they don't irritate my ears. They're such good quality. A lot of earrings make my ears really hot and red, particularly this ear that I actually had to have re-pierced like twice. It kept healing up. There's obviously some kind of issue with that piercing and it's always been a bit problematic. A lot of earrings inflame it and these earrings, like I forget they're there. They're so comfortable. They don't upset my ears and that really just goes to the quality of this jewelry. So Ana Luisa let me choose four pieces from their website. So I chose these gorgeous, mother of pearl little heart drops. I had a similar pair to these years and years and years old, like they're years old, had them many, many moons ago. And so many of you asked me where they're from in my videos and I don't know because they're so old. These are exactly the same shape, but with that beautiful mother of pearl. So if you've been looking for these little beautiful, elegant, delicate heart drop earrings, now I finally found you an even more beautiful pair because they have that gorgeous mother of pearl. Next, I chose the Ray ring. I really wanted something that had that pearl. Again, I just love pearls. I think they're so beautiful. And I love that little pearl detail to this ring, but it's still very simple and can be worn every day. And they have such a great range of ring sizes as well. I have like huge ginormous hands and fingers and a lot of jewelry companies don't have sizes for me with rings because I don't have tiny dainty lady fingers. I have giant man hands. Okay. So that was a really pleasant surprise. I actually had rings in my size that didn't like only fit like my pinky. I also chose the Alina bracelet, which is just the perfect everyday gold bracelet. It's simple enough to wear every day, beautiful enough to wear like to occasions or out for dinner. It's a very versatile piece that again, it feels very comfortable to wear. You forget you're wearing it and it's got that just gorgeous gold quality to it that just makes it really elegant. And finally, I chose these gorgeous Lee earrings with the black stones. As soon as I saw these on the website, I knew I had to have them because they're just so unique, but at the same time with the gold and the really small, subtle, delicate black stones in there, they're really eye-catching and really quite unique and different, but still really understated and beautiful. And because the color is black, it's just the perfect earring for a party, for a wedding, very, very elegant and sophisticated, but with a bit of a modern twist, which I absolutely love about those. So those are the four pieces that I chose for myself from the Ana Luisa website. I love them all. They're exactly what I look for when it comes to jewelry, elegant, understated, subtle, but beautiful. And Ana Luisa actually have huge sales going on at the moment. I think they've just finished their Black Friday sale, but now their Cyber Monday sale is going on all week. And that gives you buy one, get one 65% off, but they have lots and lots of amazing deals coming up over the whole entire holiday season and into the new year. So there's always like great offers to have on their website. I will link everything and net, put all the names of all the jewelry that I picked up in my description box. So if you want to click the link and check out their website, these pieces, and just to see what else they have going on there, then please check that out in the description box. And now let's get on to some products. So as always, starting off with like the non-makeup stuff that I've tried this month, I'm going to start off with an oldie, but a goldie for, for some. Turns out 
not so much for me. So this is the Elemis AHA Glow Cleansing Butter. I don't think this is the most popular one of Elemis's cleansing butters or cleanse, cleansing situations. But I'm sure you guys know that Elemis is, you know, right up there as far as people's favorite cleansing balms or these types of makeup removing product balm type products. So I got this in a box. I think it was one of my Look Fantastic boxes. Uh, so it was like gifted in a wider kind of box. I don't love it. It's It smells lovely. It feels nice on the skin. However, I just, it doesn't do it for me when it comes to removing my mascara. Face makeup, fine, no problems. It's just not a patch on my pharmacy cleansing balm. That one is way better at getting off mascara and eye makeup and this one, yeah, I don't absolutely love it. It feels a bit thicker. It kind of is a little trickier to rinse away. So for me, this isn't one that I would personally repurchase or purchase to begin with. Next up, I was gifted the Dr. Sam's Flawless Revival Mask this month, and this one I love. My skin, I had definitely upset my skin slightly this month with just going in with too many actives, and, and this is so nice and soothing. I like to put this on a big, thick layer, and I just leave it on like when I'm going about my day in the house. If I'm not wearing makeup, if I don't have anywhere to go, I will just whack this on and just wear it for the whole day and it's so soothing it's so hydrating and it just really feels like it's bringing my skin back to life you know treating it nice helping it recover I really like this one I love the packaging really easy to get a large amount out really quickly you get a whole hundred mils I feel like this is going to last me a long time next up I was gifted this lip oil last month from Athleisha I hope I'm saying that correctly this is like the nicest lip oil I've ever tried it feels so lovely and light on the lips but it actually lasts. I feel like a lot of lip balms, oils, that type of, you know, nourishing lip products, just, they feel like they've gone. They've disappeared in like an hour. This stays on my lips and feels like it's soothing my lips and nourishing my lips for hours. And it looks so beautiful. It's so shiny, not at all sticky, feels very nice and just slippy on the lips, but it actually feels like it's doing something and it's doing something for a long amount of time. I've really noticed my lips feel way, way more hydrated, especially in these months when the heating is on and it's freezing outside. These, This is really keeping my lips like in good nick and I really like how it looks on the lips as well. It makes them look juicy and plump and full, but they feel so nourished. This was like a real revelation to me because I never really got into lip oils before, but that one is good. Okay. Next up, a bit of a weird, some would say boring product to talk about, but I'm going to talk about it because I don't, I didn't know about this and maybe you don't know about this and you need someone like me to come along and help you. This is the wet brush. Do you guys know about the wet brush? Because I didn't. This was one that I heard about from Lydia Millen. She spoke about this in one of her videos and basically how gentle it is on her hair and how it's the only brush she'll use on her hair. Now she, she suffered a lot of breakage and damage to her hair a few years back. Um, so she's in the sort of repair process and so I immediately thought I need to try this one for myself two for my daughter who has the knottiest hair known to man okay that girl's hair gets so knotty and if I even like show it a brush she starts yelling that I'm hurting her hair and I'm not okay that is a lie so I saw Lydia talking about the wet brush and thought I would give it a try. It's very affordable and it's for use with wet or dry hair. You can use it in the shower or, or just for every day. I actually use this to like separate, you know, my curls. If I just blow dry my hair and I feel like it get, brushes them out, you know, the tight curls really nicely. It's just a great multitasker. And for sure, the way I can tell that this is much more gentle in my hair is how little hair there is in here. Like I've been using this for like a a week and there's barely any hair in the brush whereas normally this would be like full to the brim where I've yanked hair out of mine and my daughter's head so I find it really gentle really really effective at getting knots out in my daughter's hair when it's wet without causing too much pain or breakage it's a dream I love it very very nice gentle brush that seems to avoid a lot of breakage. And finally, for the non-makeup products, let's talk about this fragrance. This is Matthias Crystal Saffron, my first fragrance from this house. 
what a start. Let's just say it won't be my last based on my experience with this perfume. This could not have been more perfect for what I was hoping for. So obviously this is a saffron heavy fragrance. If you like saffron, if that's a note you know that you've enjoyed in fragrances before, this is divine. It's glorious. If you like Baccarat Rouge 540 and you love the, the saffron note in there, but you would like something slightly less woodsy and a bit less sweet, this is like that without that sort of sickly sweet twang that it has in Baccarat Rouge. It's beautiful. The performance is glorious. It's perfect in that it's very long wearing and I can smell it easily, wafts of it all day long and it stays on your clothes for days, but it's not loud and shouty and overpowering. So it's very office appropriate, very sort of close confines friendly. I think it would be an all year round fragrance as well. It's not going to get too much in summer because it doesn't have that sickly sweetness. It's divine, glorious, such a beautiful, fresh, but slightly unique scent. I really, really am loving this one. Really happy with how that turned out. So moving on to the makeup, let's talk about the MAC Holiday products that I have tried so far, so far, which is the various different lipsticks and the eyeshadow singles. So MAC gifted me a whole load of their holiday collection and I have had a try of these single shadows. So they sent me Don't Burst My bubbly which is like a sort of champagne shimmery single and then we had ice gold which is as the name would suggest a gold the thing is is they are very sparkly they don't seem to have much base or like color to them and even like as I'm blending it there in the swatch, it's like it's it's not staying on. It's almost disappearing and just crumbling everywhere. And that's kind of been my experience with these shadows. I'm not a big fan. I was quite disappointed. I thought these were going to be beautiful. I've had some gorgeous MAC singles before, especially from their holiday collections previously. Some beautiful ones. These kind of like overpromise, under deliver because they look so beautiful in the packaging. And then like on the eye, there's just, they really don't give me much impact. So I was unfortunately disappointed with those. But thankfully, MAC delivered where they always deliver, and that is their lip products. So they released some new luster glass shades for the holidays. I really love MAC's luster glass bullet formula. I think it's such a nice, shiny, sheer kind of formula. They have some beautiful colors. The red here is put a bow on it, a very wearable, like everyday kind of red because it's a bit sheerer and shinier. It's very wearable. And then this I've been naughty is the nude. I've really been liking these. These are just very wearable, nice, shiny lipsticks. But let's talk about these, which are the Powder Kiss Liquid Lip Color. I think I have tried this formula before. I don't know, maybe I haven't, but I love these. This formula is so great. I tried these and then immediately went and ordered another shade because I was so wowed by them. I wore this shade, which is the best gift is me, in an Instagram post recently, and I've never had so many questions about what lipstick is that in my life. Cheers Dears is the other color, this more sort of vampy, purple. I absolutely love this formula. Like I said, I went out and bought another shade. That's how much I liked it. It's like a moussey sort of liquid. So it's not like a liquid liquid. It's like a mousse type of feeling. Um, it isn't completely transfer proof. So if you were to kiss your hand, you'd have a very light bit of transfer there. So it has that bit of give that makes it more comfortable and they will make it through a meal. They slowly sort of fade out without, you know, some liquid lipsticks, they'll just disappear from the middle of your mouth, which is a really unfortunate look. These don't do that. They just slowly fade throughout the day. They're very comfortable, feel beautiful on the lips. They have a 
great amount of pigmented color to them and they wear fantastically but without either super drying out your lips or just disappearing from the middle of your mouth making you look crazy so i was really really impressed by the lip products especially the colors you guys also really really loved the lighter of the liquid ones the best gift is me i think that's a very flattering shade for winter so yeah the lipsticks delivered the eyeshadows were a little lacking for me. Next up, let's talk about this Moon Dust Shadow from Urban Decay. So this is a single eyeshadow. Everybody has been raving about this recently on TikTok and I fell into the trap and had to try it. I mean, I think it's like 14 pounds, so it's very affordable. It's always on sale. And I thought, why not give it a go? It's just as beautiful as everybody says, okay? It's just the perfect kind of like sheer, like it's either the exact color of my skin tone or it's really not a lot of color there. I can't quite tell which it is, but it just is literally shine and wet looking like sparkle. It's very reflective and catches the eye beautifully, but it's also like very pretty and almost subtle on the eye. So I get the hype. I think it's super pretty. It's definitely not as impactful as like Pat McGrath special shades, just doesn't have kind of the base of those and like the Hmm, the gumption, you know? It's a little more pretty fairy dust kind of a sparkle. And I was really expecting these to have a lot of fallout given the type of formula and the type of like sparkle finish. And it really didn't, like a few specks didn't notice any more throughout the day. So yeah, I actually really like that shadow. I thought that was probably a big, big hit and something I wasn't really sure I would like. I haven't really bought anything from Urban Decay for like a decade. So I'm glad I finally found something I like. <laughs> Next up, let's talk about the final bit, for me at least, of Pat McGrath's holiday collection. These are the Liquilust, the metallic liquid lipsticks. These, I mean, I haven't used these since like my first video, I'll tell you that. They're just not for me. The shades, as I spoke about when I first tried these on camera, are nothing like what the images suggested. And so that made them instantly quite a disappointment. You know, I really was expecting this deeper shade to be like the picture, like a peachy sort of deeper orangey nude. And that's what it looks like. So that was really disappointing that the images online were really, really inaccurate in my opinion. And they were just way more metallic than what I was kind of hoping and expecting. And they're just not really something that I could see myself wearing very much. Well, obviously I haven't worn them very much. I haven't literally worn them since the first day I tried them. So I like the packaging, they're just not for me. Now Next up, let's talk about Natasha Denona's Retro Glam Palette. Oh, I love this palette. I can't wait to actually get to use it more because the problem is so many eyeshadow palettes came out in the last month or so that I feel like I, you know, used this a couple of times and then started using all of the other eyeshadows that I picked up that came out that I wanted to try and test out. And this one hasn't been used for like too many days and I want to get back to her and play around a bit more, but, you know, Natasha Denona's best formulas in here, a really solid color story that I really love, these greens. I just was, again, as usual, really surprised by how beautiful these shadows are and the formula of them. You know, they are really, really pretty shadows, really beautiful and really the quality in here is like the best of the best that Natasha always pretty much gives us, always delivers. I've had no issues. I love using this sparkle shadow, even just with like bronzer because it's just such a pretty, I've just mixed those two together. Oh, so I didn't clean off my finger and then I mixed the sparkle shadow with this and created the most beautiful pretty pink. So that was a happy accident. I'm gonna have to try that now. But as I was saying, this sparkle shadow, it's just so reflective and beautiful. And there's a lot of fun to be had with this palette, I feel. It's really, really fun. It's the shadows, the colors that I love. And yeah, I can't really go wrong with this sort of size Natasha Denona palette. If you like the color story, I just don't think you're really going to be disappointed by the contents. Such a great palette. So next, let's talk about Lisa Eldridge's holiday collection. Ah. Oh, 
Wowie. I am wearing Vega, the Vega eyeshadow palette on my eyes today. I have really fallen in love with this little eyeshadow palette. It might be my favorite ever cool toned eyeshadow palette, particularly like a smaller size, okay? They're so hard to find a good, true, cool eyeshadow palette. And this little bad boy is so good. It's just so versatile. You know, you've got some real light and shade in here. Today, I started off just using these two and a little bit of this shimmer. And then I was like, no, I wanna do a bit more. So I added a bit of the black really lightly and it just helped me kind of add a bit of impact. The black can be used so lightly. It's the easiest black eyeshadow that I've ever used. You know, you don't, it's not like it's won't blend out or it goes patchy or it will only give you a certain level of pigment. You can literally use it as the blackest black liner with a teeny brush, or you can use it like I did today and just literally really lightly add some depth and it would never look like I've used a black eyeshadow today. It just gave me a bit of depth that I was wanting and craving. The shimmers are so stunning. The formulas that Lisa has come up with are absolute fire. I am loving them. They're so easy and beginner friendly and user friendly. And oh, I just, I love them. They, the looks that I've created, especially with Vega, it's just so sophisticated and pretty and beautiful and refined, but it's not lacking. Like sometimes, you know, when I use Chanel eyeshadows or Dior eyeshadows, some Tom, and most Tom Ford palettes, I'm just like, I get that it's a sophisticated, refined, music vibe that the brands are going for but I just always feel like I'm I'm lacking I'm missing it's just not giving me enough whereas these have all of those vibes the smoother softer slightly more understated colors and pigmentation and level of shimmer but it is enough it's giving me enough to satisfy like my need for impact while still giving me a smoother refined more classic look talking about sorcery I mean such a you unique look actually on the eye. The colour story doesn't look like an everyday neutrals palette by any means, but I don't think it necessarily looks super crazily unique either. But on the eye, it really is quite special. Like just the combination of the green and the blue and then this duo chrome, it's actually super special, this palette. I think a lot of people sort of underestimated it and now regret not picking it up because it has sold out and we know you have to be quick with Lisa shadows. I just think the color stories in these palettes work together incredibly and happily, we know this is coming back in the new year. I don't think it will be that long. And Elisa has now confirmed that she has, as we knew she would, she's received all the feedback she's listened and we will be getting empty palettes very soon she's working on that she's going to give us that as we all knew she would she listens to feedback she gives the people what we want and so you, there will be empty palettes coming very soon incredible I just love Lisa and her brand now the lipsticks I picked up enchantment and sorcery you may have noticed I've been wearing enchantment in almost every video I can't stop wearing it I am wearing Sorcery today, liner and lipstick. And this, I 100% thought that Sorcery was going to be it. I picked up Enchantment almost as like an afterthought just to have another lip shade to kind of show you and to compare. And oh my good, it's one of like my top two or three, I think, lip colors from Lisa ever of all time. It's my hit of the two that I picked up. It's just the most ultimately wearable everyday muted red. It's so perfect. I actually love it even more, I think, than Cinnabar, but the Cinnabar liner goes so incredibly well. It's just that bit richer and, oh my goodness, the Cinnabar liner with Enchantment, a dream come true. I These lipsticks are just, you know, some of my favourite ever formulas. Certainly my favourite matte lipstick, like bullet formula. They're just so beautiful, creamy, pigmented, rich, long lasting, comfortable, and the most beautiful colours. Like Lisa's colour 
theory and just her understanding of colors is the best of the best there is. They always deliver. And these lip colors that I just don't think I'll really like, they're not really for me, always end up being like my favorite lipsticks of life. Enchantment, I know, is gonna be one of my most used lipsticks. Again, another one I feel like you could wear it all year round to the office, to a party, to Christmas day in the spring with a bit of gloss. Very, very versatile. She smashed it out of the park, as she does every time. Next up, let's talk about quite a different product for me. This is the Pink Honey Glue. So this is a brow glue. It comes with a little spoolie. And you are, the deal is, you spray the brush and then the product has a little hole and you poke the spoolie in the hole and you swirl it around and then it gives you the laminated like brow effect. Oh, and it smells delightful like sweeties. So I actually bought this after I saw, I think was it Makeup Revolution ripped off their design, like copied the entire thing, the name, the whole, the product, and there was like uproar about them yet again, ripping off a small business. And so that is how I learned about this product and thought, well, I'm going to support the small business and, and try it. I love having my brows laminated. I have them laminated like every eight weeks, but they it runs out after like four or five weeks, but my brow tech doesn't want to do them any more often than eight weeks, just protect the condition of the brows. Darn her caring about my eyebrow health. So there are always like a couple of weeks where I'm like having to use gel or something to keep the look that I like for my brows. And that's when I've been like trying this. Oh my goodness, it's powerful. If you want your brows to like not move, they aren't going to. I'll tell you that for, for free. They aren't going anywhere. I'm loving it. And you don't have to use it, you know, to create that sort of flat glued to your face look because that's what some people, you know, want it for and it'd be very effective at that. You can literally, you know, put your brows wherever you want them and they will just stay there. It's such a great product. So I'm actually really glad that there was that controversy about brands, you know, larger brands stealing from small brands so that I actually found out about this brand. So that's good, I hope. Next up, let's talk about this Charlotte Tilbury eye pencil. This is the Rock and Coal in the shade I Cheat and it's like a waterline brightening shade. It's so good it's the perfect color it's not like white like I don't know about you but that's what we were doing in the 90s rimmel white eyeliner and it's a bit much we've noticed we've learned to use a bright white there it definitely looks a bit like you've just got a white eyeliner on whereas this is that cream sort of beige color very soft and subtle like cancels out the sort of redness that I get in my lower waterline but and brightens the eye makes me look awake but without me looking like I'm wearing white eyeliner really long wearing really nice and subtle but very brightening I love it such a great one next let's talk about these NARS lipsticks so these are the power matte bullet matte lipsticks again they are transfer proof very long wearing I did a video testing these out through like a whole meal a whole day and swatching them on my on my lips this is American woman so there's pros and cons with these lipsticks the shades available are some of like the best ever such beautiful wearable flattering colors very very comfortable didn't find it drying didn't cause me any problems as far as how they feel on the lips very easy to apply they've got a really nice small bullet the packaging is that gorgeous like soft touch really love it however if you watch my like review and swatch video it unfortunately did not do well through a meal it kind of disappeared anywhere where basically like greasy or oily food touched my mouth it was completely gone so that was a shame because they do claim to be like transfer proof and all day wearing so I would expect if it's going to be like all day wearing it's got to make it for a meal like do you think I don't eat all day because I I do a lot so that was a little disappointing because outside of where like wearing throughout eating and drinking it they were doing so well very comfortable very long wearing no transferring on like a kiss on a cup on a mug but they aren't going to make it through a meal so that is the the negative everything else i really loved about them the colors especially some beautiful colors available next up let's talk about the hourglass phantom glossy balm 
duo. This is like a Christmas gift set. I think it's currently sold out everywhere. I don't know if it's going to be restocked. I really hope it is. So this contains one permanent shade, which is Slip, and one limited edition shade, especially for the holiday like gift set, which is Rouse. These are like my two favorite colors now of our glass lipsticks. This is such a good little kit for me, little set, perfect gift. And I have been loving them. I love this formula anyway, but the colors in this set are like the best colors there are. And so I'm super happy with it. I've been wearing them a lot. These like really give you glossy, shiny, plump looking lips without them being like super burny or like setting fire or, you know, ice cold, you're gonna, your lips are gonna fall off from frostbite. They're just a bit more sort of soft and delicate and there's a bit of a tingle a bit of a menthol feeling but it's not really extreme and it's more about giving you sort of juicy full lips but your lips feel nice after you take it off at the same time and these colors are just perfect i'm a big fan of this formula especially the colors in this set if it comes back into stock Oh, hopefully it does because they are glorious and these colors are just the perfect like everyday nudes. Next up, I tried two of the blushes from Kia Weiss, the cream blushes. This is one that you guys have been recommending to me that I try in my quest to try more creams and liquids this year. My makeup resolution was to try, or one of them was to try more creams and I've got to try the best of the best creams in order, you know, to try and work on my allergy to to them. So I picked up two shades of blush, blushing and desired glow. So desired glow is this like nude shade, very subtle, pretty every day. And then blushing, which is this more like coral, almost the same color as my top shade. I just love the finish of these. That's the thing that I've always loved about creams is everything just is glowier and more like healthy and luminous typically. You know, it's hard to find powders that have that really fresh dewy finish. And these are beautiful, shiny, glowy, healthy cheeks. They are on the easier side to work with as far as creams. They are very soft and subtle, so that I have to use quite a lot and be quite careful to build it up. But the effect on the cheeks is beautiful. I'm definitely going to keep using these. I think they're gorgeous. For me, they're slightly trickier to work with than powders. But on the cream scale, some of the best I've ever tried. And so thank you to you guys for recommending them to me because they are the, I mean, I feel like with these particular creams, the slight struggle is worth it pays off, you know, it's worth the extra bit of effort for the effect that these give. So I will actually, you know, I can see myself actually keep on using them because usually if something's tricky to use, I can't be bothered. I'd rather use my powders. Whereas these are so beautiful, I feel like I will continue to, to use them because they're gorgeous. Okay, and lastly, let's talk about the two new shades of Charlotte Tilbury lipstick that I picked up this month. Really low expectations, really only bought them to review and show you guys swatches and comparisons and help you with your purchasing decisions and was blown away, okay? Two of my favorite ever Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. So we have Chic Pink, and nude talk. If you want to see them compared to existing shades, then I have a load of comparisons and swatches in my review video of these lipsticks. So this is Chic Pink. Didn't really expect because of the name to love it, but I did find it was more of a sort of peachy nude for me. And then nude talk. So we have Chic Pink and nude talk, which I thought was going to be much too light for me again, based on the pictures. So so I love these two shades. Rosie's Deduction was the third shade I tried in the video, but I have had that one and spoken about that in the previous one because that came out for some reason like a month earlier than these two. Nude Talk in particular, I can barely take this off my lips, particularly with Iconic Nude Liner from Charlotte Tilbury. That combo is utter perfection. I know lots of people sort of say, oh, you know, Charlotte Tilbury lipstick, she keeps on bringing out more of the same. Let me tell you, I didn't find a dupe at all among my very, very large lipstick collection of Charlotte Tilbury. There was nothing identical to either of these shades. And also, 
I understand what you're saying, but at the same time, you know, in 2022, how can a brand like bring out a lipstick colour or lipstick colours that we've never seen before? I think at this point, we'll probably have to accept that most things have kind of been seen and done before, particularly at lipstick shades. I don't think anyone's really going to invent a new colour at this point. But this nude talk, the tone, the undertones of it, it's the most natural, beautiful, like, sort of lighter caramel undertone. There is something really like quite unique actually on the lips, for me at least, about this shade. It is just the most perfect nude for me on my skin tone. And with that iconic nude liner, it's perfect. Especially if I wanna do a really dramatic eye look or I've got quite a, you know, a colorful cheek going on. It's like the most perfect neutral lipstick but a very flattering and quite like different interesting undertone to it very beautiful chic pink it's just a gorgeous peachy slightly peachy leaning nude and I love it again I didn't have anything identical to it and I love this kissing formula so I'm super happy to have a couple more shades of this that I absolutely love and I'm finding myself wearing a lot because they're just exactly what I love about lipstick and this packaging oh, I love it <laughs> so there you have it that is my November beauty roundup thank you again to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video please go and check out their link in my description box and let me know what you think of their products if you've tried them and what your favorites were from my picks I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love to see you in the next one otherwise take care for now bye 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 bye, bye.